Peace everyone, Unmaskart here and welcome back to the Drawing Journal. All right, everyone. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about practicing and uh, how how I perceive the best way to practice for the benefit of uh, getting better as quickly as possible. And I think this, you know, regardless of whether or not you're drawing or coloring or painting or doing digital art, um, what is it? What what is it that I think? is most important about practice the, the elements of what you're practicing for the purpose of getting better because you know why else do you practice um, as you can see I've had I have the uh, the original drawing journal sketchbook and believe it or not even though there's only 50 pages in this sketchbook and I th think I might even torn a couple out um, I've been working in the sketchbook since I started the drawing journal series, but uh, I, I tend to get sidetracked a lot, and I've never actually filled this sketchbook up. So I have some of my original practice pieces in this sketchbook, and that's what this that's what this sketchbook was all about. And because I, uh, you know, I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to work in this sketchbook today, uh, it kind of, it kind of got me thinking about what it is that I do that I incorporate into my kind of practice regimen to get better or to get better as fast as possible. So here's just you know a few sketches. Most of you have probably seen these um, these drawings here, um, but today I'm going to be coloring some gold-looking lips. I really have no rhyme or reason as to why I chose this particular subject. Uh, just kind of thought it was going to be fun to work on. Lots of texture, um, a lot of delicate kind of uh, work to create the three-dimensional look of the lips. As you can see, I've already kind of started, uh, which is something I was playing around with yesterday. Um, hello, Anna, Chrissy, Wendy, Gihan. Uh, Kalia, Natasha, uh, hello everyone. Thank you guys so much. Um, why is the picture blacked out? Um, hopefully everything on the camera is good. Uh, on my side, it, everything looks fine. But uh, yeah, so getting into uh, today's subject, I'm gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna try to draw a little bit. <laughs> while I'm talking about this. But, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to practice, just about everybody hates doing it. And I have to include myself into that because usually when you think about practice, you associate it with kind of menial tasks that you do over and over and over again for the sake of, um, establishing like one good quality about you know whatever it is you're doing whether you know it's uh, a sport or something like that or whatever you know um, I've always found that when it comes to art uh, the, the the most effective way that I've found to practice is to just continue creating things and the, the the way that I go about working on on you know coming up with a new project or whatever I never I never try to approach it the same way uh, if you're if you're working on if you're in the midst of you know creating work, creating a body of work. Uh, usually you focus a lot on, you know, creating your next piece and, and practice kind of falls to the wayside. But of course, uh, you, you're always learning when you create something. Uh, and that's, that's always been my favorite way 
to incorporate practice into my regular schedule of, of work is is not uh, not breaking practice up into kind of different sections like if I'm if I'm creating something then my practice is right along with that for instance this drawing here what is it that I'm what is it that I'm practicing with this drawing I would have to say that I feel I feel a little scatterbrained today, so I apologize. Uh, but when I when I work on something, when I'm creating something new, I try to incorporate a new approach. I think of I think of how I would have done it if I didn't try something new, and then I force myself to incorporate something new, and it could be. It could be as simple as how I hold the pencil, or whatever. It, it honestly doesn't matter what it is that you change. When it, when it comes to practicing art and practicing effectively, it's, it's finding those really small really small techniques. It doesn't have to be something drastic. It doesn't have to be like, you know, the paint you buy or the pencils you use. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, the, the pre-planning that you do. It can be something, it can be something small that you just incorporate, that you just try out. It could be the result of an experiment. I think the, the, the most important thing to take away from this conversation is that um, in order to practice effectively you have to know what you're doing and that seems kind of counterintuitive to uh, learning you know if you're if you're trying to learn something or get better at it how how do you do that and and also know and what I mean by that is is to identify what it is you're doing in the first place. When, for instance, when I'm working on, on this picture here, there's a lot of texture in the lips. And to be honest with you, uh, even at my level of drawing skills, um, I'm not exactly sure how to approach that texture. Because I know, I know that if I, if I, over exaggerate the texture in the lips it's just gonna look like a dry desert ground it's gonna be all cracked and and things and I have to I have to ask myself like okay I, I don't have any experience really with this particular style of lips I don't know if you noticed back here in the beginning of this sketchbook but I did draw a mouth before here uh, and it's not terrible. Uh, there's quite a lot of texture that I was able to get in the, in the mouth, but I would say in the grand scheme of things, the lips aren't really that great. Um, this was, gosh, I don't even know, last year sometime, I think, or even earlier than that. Uh, but the, the lips really don't have the kind of texture and detail that these lips have. And I think that's probably what drew me to attempt to draw this particular uh, uh, picture here, because it it had something in it. it this this uh, subject had something in it that I I didn't personally know how to approach, and that that is also another key element to how I practice effectively is is I choose things to draw and to color or to paint that I don't know how to do. I, I, I don't know how to approach. I have to reinvent my, my strategy for this subject by itself. I mean, obviously I know the, the, the drawing has to be accurate. I know that I need to get the right contrast. I know I need to choose the right colors. 
but actually applying the colors to the page, I have to reevaluate my strategy for it. And I would say it's probably the, the biggest factor that I um, use to continuously evolve as an artist and to gain more and more experience uh, is I as I'm constantly choosing things that I have no idea how to do um, hello Sarah thank you for coming to the live stream oh hey Scott yeah of course I remember you it's been a while glad to see you back and Ankush, welcome. Too many ladies in the sketchbook? Well, you know me. Can't help it. Uh, I find when I follow tutorials, projects, they aren't necessarily how I work or the order I would do it force myself to learn and learn from it and always take away something new. Yeah, that's, um, you know, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't watch a lot of uh, tutorial videos on painting, coloring, drawing, or anything like that. I'm too, uh, I'm a bit too busy making my own. And uh, every now and every now and then, Maybe I'll uh, I'll catch a tutorial or something, but uh, I actually usually am watching it for the sake of uh, wondering if it's any good for one and two whether or not I should make uh, a better version of it uh, because there's you know there's a lot of instructional stuff on drawing just about everything coloring just about anything using any medium that you can imagine um, and you know it's they're great they're great and um, a lot of people a lot of people I feel like they they want these step by step they, they want to know okay how do you how do you color these lips step by step and if I Perhaps if I sat down one day after coloring these this same picture two or three times, I would be able to break it down into, you know, four or five steps that would allow just about anybody with minimal experience uh, to be able to draw these. But uh, for me, and for most of us, you know, those videos don't exist for the exact thing that we want to create. And in a lot of ways, we have to teach ourselves what the steps are. And the more experience that you have coloring and drawing determines how you think the best approach is. I think one of the, one of the uh, ideas that um, I usually create in a lot of my tutorial videos is that I, I present a strategy. Uh, that's kind of my, my core framework for my teaching method is that I try to create a simplified strategy so that the information is not only digestible, but it's followable by just about anybody at any skill level. And when you when it comes to coloring, drawing, painting, whatever, creating your your own pieces, there is no framework unless you've built one yourself. And so you and a lot of times you just have to dive right in. And of course, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. I think one of the pitfalls that a lot of people fall into, and I would say that it's probably the largest source of discouragement when it comes to creating, because um, you know we're all 
we we all do the you know i'll never be as good an artist as that other person as person a b or c we we look at their work and we're like i would never be able to create anything like that um and when it comes to when it comes to creating your own stuff and you don't have you don't know what what path to take what strategy to use to um, create that what you want uh, you know that that discouragement that train of thought is going to ruin your enjoyment for of, of working on it in the first place so you know let yourself relax a little bit and recognize that everything that you work on is always going to be practice it's always going to be practice everything that i do uh, there's there's almost no instance that i can think of where i i've created something that i have to rethink my approach and uh just recognizing just recognizing that the way that you the way that you dive into a piece whether it's the way you start with your sketch or the way that you apply your colors just to know that uh, reevaluating your strategy taking the time to think about it can be one of the greatest forms of practice when it a lot of a lot of your practice uh, can actually just come in the form of thinking it doesn't necessarily have to be you know trying to sketch the form of 5000 different pictures uh, reference pictures of 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 the human form or whatever you don't have to you know oh i have to learn this proportion you have to learn the map out the shapes of the head like it doesn't necessarily have to be so tedious and boring uh, you can simply create your own and sometimes it just takes it just takes you time to think about what your approach should be uh, oh hello dave from ohio i'm also from ohio uh and uh paul from portugal uh, I'm closing in on 15,000 subs. Yep, you're absolutely right. It has been uh, it has been growing quite steadily the past couple weeks. Uh, it's been very exciting. Thank you. Find it very hard to do teeth, whether it's people, animals. Uh, yeah, teeth teeth can be a, a problem for a lot. Um, I think one of the biggest issues is that uh, people are afraid to apply the correct colors and values to teeth um, because the, the the truth is teeth aren't white uh, as much as you'd love your teeth to be pure white they're just never pure white in photographs or anything because they're shaded your lips hang out so the light doesn't hit them directly your lips cast a shadow across your teeth making them gray uh, so there's just no way around it this color that i'm using by the way is uh 846 and this is a pretty dark color it's a pretty dark greenish gray color in fact and i'm just working on the cast shadow uh, of the lips uh, that's you know it's a good it's a good thing that you brought up coloring teeth painting teeth you you said that you have absolutely no uh you, you struggle with them regardless of the the medium that you try whether you're painting them or coloring them with colored pencils or whatever other uh, medium and i think that uh with with a bit of practice uh practice the way that i am trying to uh communicate i i know i'm i'm doing a bunch of rambling and to be honest with you this is what the drawing journal really is always been about is just me rambling i decided to to give today's drawing journal um try to focus the the theme of today's conversation around the practice but uh you know 
you don't want to approach if if you're here here's here's the the secret okay if this can even be a secret if you constantly are struggling with teeth and it doesn't matter whether you're using colored pencils acrylic paint or ink or markers or whatever else then the problem isn't that you're incapable of doing it the problem is that you are repeating the same thought process each time that you're doing teeth you can you can do it i guarantee you can do it i i can teach anybody how to draw and color and paint and whatever so if you're approaching it and you if you're approaching teeth with the same mindset every single time regardless of the medium you're going to be dis you're going to be disappointed with the outcome every single time because you're repeating the same thought process so you have to reevaluate your thought process that's the key that's that's the key to progression you know that's the point of practice right you practice so that you can get better but if you're not practice if you're just you know um trying to think if if you take a, a white pencil and say you take one other color maybe you maybe you feel slightly confident that teeth have a, a bit of a lighter gray color like this 842 say you start with these two colors and you just keep drawing and coloring teeth over and over and over and over again you're going to end up with the same results as long as your mindset is the same that this is the darkest color that teeth could possibly be but if you reevaluate your colors you know re-examine your reference photos study it isolate the colors then you'll know that teeth can go as dark as this they can go as dark as this you know this super brown color um, or even a bit of red depending on the lighting maybe the bright red lipstick is reflecting on the teeth teeth can be just about any color you know just because you associate them with white doesn't necessarily mean that they're white which actually um it's kind of uh it's kind of ironic that i, I say that because this week uh on wednesday i'm uploading a tutorial uh, about white fur and uh, i kind of explain i kind of explain the illusion of of white in white fur and I go through a few examples so hopefully hopefully that will give you a bit of insight on something like teeth because you know teeth are associated with being white um, and, and I'm not even coloring on white paper right now I'm coloring on tan paper um, and I'm using this really dark greenish gray color to color the teeth and the teeth are gonna look pretty good uh, once I once I get there you know, once I finish shading them in and everything. If you guys, if you guys have any uh, questions, I'm I'm happy to answer them. So don't feel shy about asking questions. Just even if it's not necessarily on the on today's topic of, of effective practicing. Maybe you just have a few thoughts or even disagreements with what I'm saying. I'm, I, I, I don't, uh, in no way do I pretend that I know everything. In fact, I think the whole purpose of this video is to express that I don't know everything. And it's because of that lack of, it's, it's because of that lack of knowledge that I I regard everything that I do as practice. Uh, teeth actually have a lot of uh, a lot of kind of non-smooth shapes that I'm trying to get into this here. One of the other things that I I still struggle with and I imagine many of you struggle with you know fear of like laying down colors and uh, all that uh, scary stuff using colors afraid to go too dark on the teeth because you're 
you know, worried that they're going to just look brown and gray and hideous. This is uh, another another reason to take the time to just sit there and stare at your reference photo, examine it, create a digital color palette from it. You know, know your colors that that show up, know where they show up, and if you're if you're if you've studied it enough, then you can recognize that when you you pick up a color and even though it, it may look wrong in the beginning you know that it's correct because you did your homework you've you've worked out the 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 right colors the right spots for instance these these teeth here you know i know that i'm using the right color uh even though it's a little a little scary for me to lay it down because I don't want to mess it up, you know. We that's a that's another thing um, when it when it comes to practice, you have to you have to try your very best to get over the fear of messing up. Uh, and if you if you start regarding more and more of your work as being just practice, then it might just be enough for you to gain the confidence uh, to mess up. Because the difference, you know, there's there's really two there's really two directions, right? So you start you start at the, the starting point and you have two choices. You can either go the the correct way, which is going to be scary. And if you're inexperienced, it's going to be not only scary, but it's, you're going to be uncertain. And then the other way, the other way that you choose to go is the wrong way, which is the direction where you, you feel like you're making the right choices. The key word is feeling, not knowing. The, you, you play it safe and you're apprehensive those are the three emotions that you'll or thoughts that you'll have in the wrong direction so if you feel like you're working on something and you feel anxious about you know maybe applying too much color or not applying enough whatever or messing up um, you play it safe where you know you you know, you only lay a little bit of your color down and you, even though you've studied your reference photo and you're like, okay, that, that value is pretty much, you know, this color, it's, it's exactly this color. And I almost can't lay enough of that color down, but yet you still only lay a little bit. You kind of work up to it that then, then you have, then you have multiple outcomes, right? So if you go the wrong direction, no matter what, you know, you play it safe, you, you know, you only lightly do everything, that way you never exceed, that way you never exceed what uh, you imagine to be there. So for instance, you know, I use this, this dark gray color, but say I only barely touch the teeth or the paper with this color, um, I'll never get... I'll never get the results that I want if I do that. So no matter what, my, my final product will always be less than ideal. But in contrast, so that's the second route. That's the, the, the wrong direction. Now, the right direction, you know, you're going to be scared because you, you, there's potential for you to mess things up. Um, but after you know, studying your reference photo or, or whatever it is. I'm just, I'm using it as an example. It doesn't necessarily have to be studying a picture. It could just be you creating your own character uh, drawing or whatever. You have, you all, you have two outcomes from the right direction. So going in the wrong direction, 
you only have one outcome, and that is something that you're going to be mildly disappointed in or massively disappointed in, and it's always going to be less than ideal. But if, if you go the right direction where you take the risk to lay down the colors, you take the risk of, of you know, making a, a, an unrepairable mistake, you take that risk, okay? Say you take that route, you go the right way where you, the, the potential of, of completely messing the piece up is a, a reality. Well, if you go that way, you actually have two outcomes as opposed to going the wrong way. Because the wrong way, you'll always be disappointed. And I think a lot of people are stuck. I think there are, I think a lot of people are always going to be stuck going the wrong direction because they're because of color fear, things like that. Fear uh, of applying the color, fear of getting the, the dark contrast, the darker mid-range colors, usually doesn't happen with black. For some reason, people feel comfortable applying black but when it comes to the mid-range, the, the, the darker mid-range colors, the, you know, the colors that are right next to black, um, that's where people, you know, get scared into paralysis with their, with their creations. But if you choose to risk it and you go the right route, the two outcomes are either something that you can really be proud of or something you totally messed up on. But if you go the right direction, even though, even if you don't get an outcome that you'd be proud of, the outcome in which you totally mess it up teaches you something. It will teach you something so valuable that you would, you would never expect it to. You will immediately grow to the next level. That's that's the that's the key to practicing. That's the key to, to progressing is to get to that next level, you have to choose the right path and the right path is to risk it. Take the risk. Because if you're playing it safe every single time you create something, you're you're always going to be slightly disappointed in the outcome. And you're never going to know what it is. You know, maybe maybe a you know, time will pass and eventually you might learn what it is that you're missing. You know, you might figure it out. But you won't figure it out nearly as fast as if you take the risk and you mess up and you figure out that's what it is. Okay, that's what I need to do. That's what I, that's what I had done wrong there. Because if I, if I were to play it safe with these colors on just these teeth right here. I would have never went as dark as I did. I would have never went as dark with that color because I would have thought that color's too dark. It's it's too dark. It's it's going to mess it up. Then I would have been left with something that I would have been disappointed in because it would have looked mediocre. The teeth wouldn't have looked as three-dimensional. They wouldn't look as, you know, realistic as I really wanted them to be but if I applied the color and it doesn't have to be fearlessly but I, I applied the color knowing that there's this potential that I might make a mistake that's that I can't go back from see this is why this uh, the reason why people always choose the wrong path to play it safe is because, uh, and I, I'm kind of I, I'm kind of uh, used heavily using the uh, idea that uh, we're using colored pencils here, because colored pencils are one of those mediums that you just can't you just can't go backwards with, you know, watercolors, ink, uh, and and colored pencils, even graphite in some cases, you know. If you go dark with graphite, you can't really take it a step back because you're going to damage your paper. It's not going to erase as well, those kind of things. Um, but the reason, uh, the reason so many people choose the wrong path in general is because they know 
or they subconsciously know that uh, there's always room to make some correction you know if you if I only colored that color real lightly and my teeth weren't as bold and as strong as I want them to, to be uh, then then the the corrective way to repair it would be to just add more of that color it's fixable but if I added too much you know removing it would not be necessarily uh, a, a way to fix it or a possibility to fix it and I think that's why uh, a lot of people are stuck with the safe route the safe wrong direction in the beginning of their work afraid afraid to apply the color afraid to take the risk but I, I can I can assure you that uh, no matter no matter uh, the outcome if you take the risk you will either learn more than you ever have or you will create the best thing that you ever have those are the, the two outcomes repeating repeating the same process this with the same mindset every single time will be uh, will be immensely discouraging for for yourself and for your work so take the time take the time to uh, to risk it I hope that I hope that in the midst of all my rambling and I sometimes it's a little hard for me to keep track of my train of thought um, these 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 ideas are coming to me in real time I didn't write any of this down or or even really put a lot of thought into what I was gonna say actually I was kind of I was a little bit nervous before the live stream to be honest with you because I was like well in it, when I scheduled this live stream I was thinking well what could I talk about and I was like, you know, I'm just going to talk about practice of practice, how to do it, how I do it. I was just going to talk about how I practice to get better at things because it took me it took me a relatively short amount of time to to do decent things with colored pencils. Uh, and part of the part of that reason was because I took the risk every time I risked I risked messing things up that I didn't know how to do. I was drawing things constantly that I've never drawn before. Nearly every single thing that I draw is something I've never done before. Uh, now it's getting a little bit harder uh, because I've drawn so much over the past couple years, but uh, I, I, I constantly try to draw things that I never have. And for every single time that I draw something that I haven't drawn before, uh, it requires me to reevaluate my strategy. See, on this, on these, on this drawing in particular, you can see that I've avoided the lips like the plague. I, I'm working on something I'm confident on, and that's the teeth. I'm probably only going to finish the teeth today uh, because I'm so I, I'm I'm so lost when it comes to what I'm going to do with these lips. Usually, in most cases when my, my strategy in most cases is to isolate the colors from the texture uh, but with these lips there's there's so many of these cracks and crevices and details and things like that I'm, I'm unsure as whether or not that that strategy of thought is gonna work so I have to reevaluate and think about okay how how am I going to do it? I don't want I don't want to break up all these cracks and draw every single little piece individual. Uh, for one, that would take a million gosh darn years, and for two, uh, it would over exaggerate all the cracks, and it would look like a bunch of stones sitting next to each other. So I, I just don't think that approach is going to work. So I have to think about what I'm going to do, and I'm kind of stalling as long as I can on the teeth. 
so that I don't uh, embarrass myself on the live stream by messing this up. Just applying a little bit of black here to get a nice separation. I apologize for not looking up very much and uh, checking out what you guys are asking or saying. So let me do that really quick. Let me see if I can catch up. Uh, hello, Vicky. Good morning. Um, I was wondering, what do you think about artist anxiety? Do all artists suffer from it since our job is lonesome? What are your thoughts about it? So uh, I think it might be a personality thing. I'm sure there's probably artists that, you know, are much more social than me, for instance. Uh, but when it comes to when it comes to artwork, I'd say that uh, for for me in particular, when I create something, uh, it's it's like an entry into a journal. I have hundreds and hundreds of of my work collected a lot of it in a drawer over there uh, but a majority of it is back in storage in the united states uh, because i couldn't really justify bringing a bunch of old artwork to poland when i moved here and i can i i've gone back a lot of times and i i like to do it i like to go through the work that i've completed in the past 20 or 16 years not 20 uh 16 years that i that's about as far back as most of my stuff goes as 16 years i don't think i have anything uh that i did before i was 12 and every single one of them i remember drawing and i remember a period of my life in which i was drawing that kind of kind of the emotions that inspired it and even though a lot of what I draw now, I, I kind of feel disconnected because a lot of what I do is, uh, is it feels a little less personal. But there are pieces throughout the, you know, throughout this year even that that I have kind of a personal attachment to. And for that reason, and the, the reason that I'm bringing that up is because when I share my work, there there might be a, a subtle amount of anxiety in the way that people perceive it or they judge it. Um, and I think that that's something that a lot of people might kind of struggle with being an artist. Um, but uh, that's, I, don't, I can't say, uh, I, I honestly, I don't know if I can say much about anxiety, uh, but when it comes to things like color fear, creating the anxiety of creating in general, um, gosh, that you know, it, it's a it's a topic I could probably talk a lot about. Because what is it really? What what is it about applying these darker colors and things to your paper or your canvas that uh, you're like you're hesitant, you're scared to apply the color? Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. Because i it's not like I'm immune to it. I look at things and I'm like, I can draw that. And then I collect my colors and I, I like, I'm, a, I'm hesitant to apply the color. But, uh, and then when I do, there's, you know, some, some reward to it. But, um, yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, if you remember, I have asked a, about applying pastel on canvas question in the group and was planning to gesso and sand and paper, your suggestion for just rechecking if it would give me a fine texture. Uh, so applying gesso onto the, the canvas, yeah. You know, the, you, you would have to experiment. You would have to experiment because of, I, I've only ever done pastels on paper that was already prepared. <clears throat> already prepared.
and for that reason I'm, I'm hesitant to give you any kind of um, exact uh, approach I can only give you what I think would work if I were to put myself in that situation how would I approach the uh, the possibility of trying to get that or get something like that to work and I would just use I would just use regular gesso I wouldn't use anything else I just use regular gesso and then then sand it afterwards to try to get um, you know a, a consistent that's I think that's the key is uh, getting a consistent texture throughout the entire thing um, and to be honest with you I don't know why you would go through that struggle because I wouldn't put myself through it uh, in all honesty uh, because I can just buy the paper but I understand if you're in a place where you know you kind of have to buy the supplies separately and you don't have access to it or it's just too expensive or something along those lines then you know by all means do your experimentation and, and you know do your research as well there I'm sure there's other people that are creating their own pastel surfaces uh, maybe not perhaps on canvas but then again why do it on canvas you know ask yourself that you could you could probably buy fairly cheap just wood panel that would be much friendlier to gesso and much easier to get uh, a consistent texture on so you know, just think about what it is you're you're doing I'm trying to catch up on the trend the chat you guys are um, way ahead of me uh, if you mess up you learn from your mistakes and move on sometimes you can't always get right all the time yeah uh, you'll n nobody ever can get right all the time that's for sure um, I certainly don't, as much as some of you may have, uh, uh, you know, thought that I do. <laughs> I certainly don't. Um, let's see. Agree, practicing and taking risks always helps me. When I look back on something, if my work... Uh, I believe I have improved and still improving yeah um, that's you know that's why I like to save my work and and go back and look at some of the things that I've created in the past decade um, because it's it's really really fun to see how far I've come because I can remember I can remember when I was like in high school and coming across to other artists, meeting meeting other artists that I considered to be far superior to my skill level at the time. And the the funny thing is I was right there with a lot of people thinking, you know, I was never gonna be that good. There there's so much there miles and miles ahead of me we're almost the same age but they're so they're they're so unique and so different from me and so much better and uh that so i never escaped that feeling i compared myself uh, all the time i still do to be honest with you i i still f come across people's work and i'm like man i wish i could create something like that but uh you know i just end up creating whatever it is that i like i just draw what i like and uh, I've been I've been fortunate enough the past year to to gain support, make friends, and have people appreciate my work, uh, whether it's just looking at it or learning from me. Uh, so. You know, try try not to be too hard on yourself. If you're if you're seeing my work or somebody else's work, where you're like, you know, I'll never get that good, um, because I I was right there with you, and it does take time. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It does take time to to really learn and uh, get good. But in the spirit of practice and the spirit of the you know, topic of this today's drawing journal. 
um, you just got to push yourself. If you if you really want something, and then you have to push yourself, and that's something that uh, I've probably never uh, really considered to be a big part of my philosophy until this past year when I've been, you know, really putting in uh, just an insane amount of effort in order to get my art career, you know, off the ground and be able to make a living from it. Oh, goodness. I mean, I'm still trying to catch up. How far behind am I? Okay, I'm not that far behind. I can actually scroll down to the bottom and still see where I'm at. Um, half of the time, I have no idea what I'm doing, especially when painting and tone that surface with that. Uh, uh, wait, did I skip? Okay, yeah. Uh, especially painting or doing something totally new, but I like the challenge. Yeah, you know, that's what I've always... That's, what, that's one thing that's always... Um, made me uh, do more art, create more art, is because, uh, wait, I'm missing a color, I think. Okay, sorry. Um, one of the things that's always made me drawn towards creating art is that it's constantly a challenge, whereas I haven't, I, I've never really gotten that feeling anywhere else. You know, there's a lot of challenges. You know, you play sports or whatever. When I was younger, I played baseball. But um, you know, part of the part of the challenge of playing a team sport or whatever is is having to deal with other people's mistakes, and I didn't like that aspect of the sport at all. Um, but when it comes to art, the only person responsible for for the mistakes uh, is yourself, and uh, so. It's uh, it it's that challenge that I've constantly I've constantly kept uh, alive by not not doing a lot of repetition with my choice of subject. I've always been um, I've always been very sporadic with my subjects. I don't do a lot of the same stuff over and over again. Uh, you know, even though I love doing portraits and, and figures and uh, that's about it. <laughs> Those are kind of my two favorites. Um, I don't do I don't do them every single time. I'm always kind of reaching outside of the box of what I like to do just for the sake of constantly challenging myself with new subjects and, and thinking up new ways to approach uh, the work. Uh, for instance, with these these lips, I, I, I decided to do this this underside of the lip where the, the lipstick doesn't cover. And because um, it's something that I look at in my reference photo, I'm like, okay, I think I can figure that out enough to do it. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. I, like I said, I'm a little, little sporadic today, but, um, I hopefully, hopefully, uh, you guys are still enjoying the stream, even though I, you know, I, I'm kind of jumping around a bit on the subject. I'm, I'm trying to keep it a little bit focused on, on practice, but, um. At the very least, all I all my my main goal is to just continue to inspire everyone to keep creating, no matter how discouraged you you may feel during the process. I can assure you that um, I deal with the same feelings. You know, no matter how no matter how good you think that I am, I I, I struggle on everything. You know, I every time I'm drawing and creating something, I'm always trying to. I'm always trying to think up like ways to keep myself encouraged, get, uh, you know, do it better, not mess up, apply the colors, you know, struggling with color fear. Maybe one day, you know, I hopefully not, hopefully not, but maybe one day I might escape 
those those feelings of uncertainty uh, I hope that I don't because it is that it is that struggle that constant struggle of of getting it right that I enjoy the most because that is the source of the challenge that is the source of of the complication and it's that it's it's that aspect of it that gives me the most satisfaction once finishing something when i finish something i, I step back and i look at it and i'm like I, I made it through you know every every piece that i create is kind of like a um, just a, a, a personal struggle and when i step back from it i'm like i did it you know what it was it was hard and uh I didn't know what I was doing half the time, but I managed. I managed to come out with with something that I can I can look at and, and be be proud of. So, um, you know, at the very least, I hope that uh, today's drawing journal uh, a few of you find inspiring, and uh, that's that's all I can hope for, really. Because I've I've mentioned it in. Um, you know, just about every other drawing journal that, uh, you know, I, I like, I like to do the drawing journals because I get to hang out with all of you awesome people. Um, but when I originally started the drawing journal, it was, it was all about me. I, I started them because, uh, well, I was never really, I was never really, uh, good at keeping a journal for, uh, you know, you know, writing it because uh, my brain thinks so much faster than my hand is capable of writing. So uh, being able to record my thoughts uh, the way that I do with the drawing journal has been, uh, it's been good and I enjoy doing it. And uh, honestly, uh, if nobody watched it, I'd still do it because uh, it's so enjoyable for me. Oh no. Uh, okay, didn't mess anything up there. Dropped my pencil. Um, but uh, fortunately, I'm I'm blessed with a great group of people that that do enjoy watching my uh, drawing journals and enjoy hanging out and chatting with me, because that does just make them that much more enjoyable. All good. We always enjoy your live streams. Oh, thank you, Chrissy. Uh, those feelings are temporary, and the most part, they've always feeling of accomplishment in the end. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, it, it most likely is quite normal uh, to think that we're always struggle with our art. You know, there's, I think. Um, there, there's some pieces, there, there's some work that I do create that uh, I know exactly what I'm doing and it's not a struggle. I don't have any anxiety or uh, fear uh, or anything like that. Um, and those, those pieces are very relaxing. Like... Uh, even though, like I mentioned, I don't know how I'm going to do these lips. Uh, like I said, I'm still avoiding them completely. And I don't really know what I'm going to do. Um, this this drawing here is, is relaxing because I'm not trying to do anything amazing. This is practice. And so for, for that reason, I'm, I'm not stressing over it. I know eventually uh, I'm going to have to work on those those lips uh, for for real, but uh, I'm I'm not stressing over this per this piece in particular because this is just a drawing journal piece anyway, and all of the work that I've done in this sketchbook have been just something to draw. So when you, you, I think I think it's important to balance. 
think it's important to balance the, the, the kind of work that you do. Because if you're constantly doing something that makes you uh, uncomfortable, then you might end up just not liking what you're doing as much. So, it, and then if you are always doing things that you feel comfortable with, then you're probably not going to progress much as an artist or as fast as you would like to. Um, so you have to you have to find a balance. You know, don't do everything that makes you comfortable, um, but also don't do everything that makes you you know full of anxiety and and constantly struggling through the whole thing. The, this picture in particular is actually kind of good in the sense that um, there's elements that I can pick out that I'm like, nah, I can do that, whatever, that's that's simple. You know, I can do the teeth, I can color in the mouth with black because that's all I did. I can do this under side of the lip. I know what colors I need to use. It's smooth. There's no, there's no struggle there. I can figure that out. But... Um, yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta balance it. Yeah, this, the the struggle definitely makes the success more satisfying. I agree. You know, if it, if you ever do something that's easy, uh, here's here's an example. Um, before I live streamed, I went out to the kitchen and I did the dishes. I don't like to do the dishes. It, but it's easy to do so after i finish doing the dishes it's not like i celebrated it's not like i felt satisfied um so you know the the events that you that you do or participate in that aren't much of a struggle at the end aren't all that satisfying so some of the pieces that you create that are the most struggle you know they often they'll often be the most satisfying in the end as well so just keep that in mind if you're if you're ever feeling discouraged while working on something just know that uh, the struggle is temporary but the artwork is permanent the the, the uh, sense of satisfy satisfy the the satisfying feeling at the end uh, usually outweighs the uh, you know the feeling of struggle in the midst of creating something Yes, always giving up after you make a mistake. Yeah, you should definitely um, you should definitely try to try to avoid that mindset uh, because a lot of things that you perceive as being a mistake are often either correctable or you've convinced yourself you made a mistake when you didn't. You know, if you're if you're creating something and you drop a bottle of ink on it. Uh, odds are that's not correctable and uh, it's 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 not correct so um, so in that case you might want to start over but uh, you know if you happen to you know splash you know a little bit of the wrong color and a splash probably isn't the right word to use but maybe I went a little bit too dark in something you know whatever one that might be correctable might be it might not be if it's not correctable then maybe it's not wrong sometimes uh, sometimes you can't identify a mistake until the very end so if you're in the middle of it and you feel like you made a mistake ask yourself uh, two two questions ask yourself one is it correctable and two is it really a mistake because there's a lot of things that I thought that I did right. There's, there's, there is an endless list of things that I think that I've done correct in just about everything that I've made. But yet, still, somehow, at the end, 
all I see are mistakes. And it's like, I, I felt like I was doing it right the whole time. So if you're in the middle and you, you feel like you made one mistake, whatever, is it really? Is it really a mistake? Because had you not made the mistake and you, you do successfully get to the end, can you look at it and say that you've not made any mistakes? Doubt it. I can't. If you can, then I don't know why you're an artist. Because the I, I've, I've said this my entire life. I said the day I create something that is without mistake is the day I quit being an artist. Because I don't want to get there. The, the, I, I don't like the, to use the word struggle but or, or even challenge because the, those tend to have a bit more negativity uh, uh, thought about them. But um, yeah, the, the day I do something perfect is the day I quit because it is that constant, it is, it is that constant approach that, uh, uh, that I strive for, for that, that just that taste of perfection that constantly drives me to continue doing it. Knowing that, well, not really knowing, but perceiving that I'll never get there, that I'll never get to that that perfect end point, uh, that makes me just keep on wanting to do it. Like every time, like pick up the pencil. I just, oh, I just gotta keep doing. It. I gotta. It's like the the search for, um, you know, the lost city, whatever, or the fountain of youth, or or you know, any mythical treasure. Um, you know, it, it's always that, it's always one step out of reach or whatever. And that's what I love, that's what I love the most. I love that, that sensation of an endless journey. And uh, the day that I reach, the day that I reach that, that perfection is, is the day the journey ends. And so I don't want, I don't ever want to reach it. I do my best to get there. I never, I never tried to do anything less than my best to get to that level of perfection. But uh, secretly, secretly, I fear the day that I reach it because I'll never. Uh, I'll just, I'll despise being there. I'll always want, I'll always want to, uh, to be searching for that, that perfection. That's what I, the search, the journey is what I enjoy the most. So I never want to get there. I'm, so. Oh, thank you, Riss. I'm glad you like the way the, it's looking. You always make the biggest mistake on the most expensive paper. <laughs> Murphy's Law. Yeah, I, uh, I think the the mistake I hate making the worst is uh, when it when I'm when it comes to cutting my paper. You know, it's, I take these large sheets of paper and use an exacto knife and a ruler to cut them. And uh, every now and again, not not super often, very rarely, in fact, uh, you know, the knife will just kind of for some reason it will just come off. It will catch something in the paper, fiber or whatever, and it will come off, veering from the uh, the ruler for no apparent reason. Uh, that's I hate that mistake. I didn't even touch it with pencil or anything, and the paper's already messed up. Always got to cut it a little bit smaller or whatever. Many times the mistakes we make is, or the, the mistakes we see as artists uh, are not visible to anybody else to us. Nobody else see it as a mistake. That is 100% that is the truth. Um, there's, that, there's that phrase, that saying that uh, an artist is their worst critic. And uh, you know, there's, there's so much truth to that because uh, we, we do see a lot of things uh, as mistakes that nobody else catches and I don't think that's ever gonna stop 
I, I really don't. They, I would have to say that. Uh, I would have to say that. The the best you can do is not be so hard on yourself. In in those times, because there's just there's endless things that you could nitpick your work about, and. Uh, sometimes I think artists just need to learn to take a compliment. Now, I don't think a lot of people struggle with this, but uh, every once in a while, every once in a while, you'll come across somebody that just cannot take a compliment about their work or whatever. You'll be like, oh, wow, that's so amazing. And they'll be like, it's, it's garbage. I, I'm terrible. Those kind of people, yeah, you should avoid those kind of people. Um, but uh, yeah, we we tend to be our worst critic uh, most of the time. But that's yeah, that's absolutely absolutely true. But you should uh, just as much effort. As you put into your work, you should put that much effort into not being so hard on yourself. You know, I, I don't, uh, I don't ever get upset if there's something that I feel like I can't do correctly when it comes to creating. For the most part, uh, I get upset only, only by seeing particular things. Uh, but that's about all I'll say there. Uh, what you are saying is very true and many artists agree, but it seems that people that don't draw or paint don't get it and think it's silly to think like that. Um, I'm not exactly sure when, what point I made that you're responding to. Uh, as I keep rambling, but uh, I'm going to assume that you're right. <laughs> uh, a lot of people have, you know, misconceptions about artists, but, uh, you know, humans, humans create stereotypes for a reason. Um, and it's a flaw in the way our brain works. You know, we uh, we want to categorize things. Our brains naturally categorize things and identify patterns for the sake of dealing with the abundance of information that we are constantly being confronted with. Um, because there, there's so much information coming through our ears, through our eyes, uh, through our other senses that uh, you know our brain can't filter every specific detail. Um, so we have to categorize, we have to generalize, we have to stereotype, we have to you know compartmentalize all of this information uh, in order to make sense of our world. So. I would say don't take too much uh, too much offense to the people that may think uh, the way that you think is silly. Um, oh goodness! Anyways, uh, this is this is where I got with my mouth today. That's that's going to be it. Um, for today's drawing journal, it's actually a bit longer than I thought it was going to be, uh, but I was really enjoying I was really enjoying talking to you guys. And once I kind of gained my footing with today's subject of practice, uh, I think the conversation evolved nicely, and I enjoyed I enjoyed sharing my thoughts with all of you. And hopefully, in some way, you either benefited or enjoyed listening to it. Um, but, uh, let's see on Wednesday on, on Wednesday, uh, I will have another tutorial, uh, on coloring white fur with colored pencils specifically, but the ideas 
techniques, theory, whatever you want to think about, um, is applicable across mediums. So it's uh, it'd be beneficial to at least uh, check the video out for for you, regardless of what subject you're working on. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, Friday I'm going to continue working on uh, a pastel piece over on Patreon. Let's see. Forgot to share these. So one of the things that I did this this weekend was I finished up my practice pieces. This is my last one here. So this is the first one. Here's the last one uh, using Prismacolor. Uh, this is these these both here. Both of these are Prismacolor, and you can see that this one is significantly more yellow than this one, uh, which was a mistake. I didn't want it to be so yellow. Uh, these. Uh, this one is luminance and this one is prismacolor and you can see the colors match colors match uh, almost perfectly but I applied a little bit too much makeup to this one um, so I'm gonna be doing a uh, colored pencil portrait course uh, I'm gonna be recording that in the next few weeks and hopefully I might be able to get that done by the end of the year I'm not gonna force myself to do it though um, and uh, so using Prismacolors and I'm gonna just take you through step by step on coloring a portrait with colored pencils I literally I, I when I colored this fourth version I wrote down every single time I changed my pencil so I, I could tell you that the very first color I started with was uh, well, actually, I can't tell you based on <laughs> based on remembering, but I can tell you that I do have it written down. I have it written down uh, what color I did and what I did with it exactly. And then I wrote down when I when I changed pencils, I wrote down that I changed my pencil, and I wrote down what I did with the next color, and I did that for the entire drawing. Um, so. Uh, when I do my colored pencil course, uh, portrait course, uh, you're going to know exactly what pencil I did and what I did it with uh, throughout the entire process. So it literally could not be any more step-by-step -step than that. So hopefully uh, when I get that course done, we'll, have, we'll be seeing a lot more colored pencil portraits coming across uh, Facebook and whatnot um, and Instagram. Um, but um, yeah, that, that's gonna be it for, for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming by and hanging out. Uh, again, I hope that you enjoyed the live stream. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up so that I know I'm doing something right. And uh, I'll see you guys next Monday. If you guys have any, if you guys have any topic choices, uh, topic ideas, or anything like that that you'd like me to discuss on next week's Drawing Journal, let me know by commenting it below, and uh, yeah, I'll try to uh, I'll try to keep those questions and things uh, in mind for the next drawing journal, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care, peace.